Today you're going to be setting teeth in the posterior area, a non-anatomical arrangement. We're going to talk about that today. Before you begin, you may have to make some changes to your anterior arrangements. Please check with your instructor before you begin just to make sure. You have multiple options when you set denture occlusion. While you are a student, your first two dentures will be set using non-anatomic flat plane teeth and the neutrocentric occlusal scheme arranged by the laboratory. We will review this setup, which is the simplest setup to learn. You have so many places where something can go wrong while you're constructing that set of dentures that we use the occlusal scheme with the most predictable successful outcome for a beginner. If you do an additional set of dentures though, you will be able to use one of the more technique sensitive occlusal schemes and I highly recommend that you do do this. There are two non-anatomic occlusion options. One is monoplane, also called neutrocentric, that sometimes people refer to as flat plane occlusion. It is illustrated above on the slide in the image on the left. Another is an arrangement of posterior non-anatomic occlusion that has balance set into it with a balancing wrap. This one is kind of illustrated on the right image. We will discuss the ramp and show you that at a later time. Non-anatomic teeth are characterized by their lack of cuspal inclinations. This is one set of non-anatomical teeth produced by Ivoclar. Note that they um, are perfectly flat when you view them from the mesial distal view, as shown in that picture on the left. They do have some pretty interesting anatomy carved into them to give the illusion that they have cusp. Ivoclar makes one of the nicest looking flat plane teeth on the market, in my opinion. The occlusal scheme is indicated when you want to reduce horizontal forces of occlusion. This is indicated if the patient has an extremely resorbed maxilla or mandible, or when the patient does not have a repeatable centric relation position. Dense ply has two teeth that are non-anatomic or zero degree teeth. One is bioform mold 429, 431, or 433. This was their original mold and was becoming a little more um, or less popular because other companies had better looking zero degree teeth. It was also in a material that was not as strong as the newer composite teeth like IPN teeth. Densply has come out with IPN molds 630, 32, and 634, which are now more natural looking and follow that what we sometimes call the European line. These are the ones that we use in our clinics at this time. You can get the Ivoclair mold if you wish to order it. Typically, when we select non-anatomic denture teeth, the neutrocentric concept is going to be used as a guide for setting these teeth. Before beginning to set the posterior teeth, check to see that one, your wax rims touch on the deniform and the spacing is still 30 millimeters in the anterior. Two, make sure that the metal rods are not lifting up out of the housing on the deniform or the mounting will be incorrect on your articulator. On a real patient, that would mean that the teeth may be lifting or hitting in the posterior first when the teeth are returned for a try-in. It would require a lot of adjustment and expense to you to have it happen at that point. You'd rather get it right, right now. Three, check to see that the rims come together on the articulator with the same orientation as on the deniform. You should check to see that your pin is at zero and the incisal guide pin should be touching when they come together. You cannot change the patient's jaw registration or the vertical dimension or you're going to have some serious problems. What you see on the articulator must be the same that you see on your patient or you need to correct it by either remounting and or setting teeth, whichever is necessary to get it right. The anterior posterior plane of occlusion should be parallel to the denture foundation area and it should be able to set flat on one of those little three by three squares that were given you. 
The rim should roughly split the difference in the space so that the wax is half on the upper rim and half on the lower rim. The condylar inclination, the guide table, and the wings should all be set at zero. In the neutrocentric concept of occlusion, the plane of occlusion is completely flat and level. There is no curve of Wilson or curve of Spee incorporated into the setup. The compensating curve is a term used for the combination of the curve of Wilson and the curve of Spee, and it applies only to a setup for complete denture occlusion. The compensating curve is the curve introduced in the construction of complete dentures to compensate for the opening influences produced by the condylar and incisal guidances during lateral and protrusive mandibular excursive movements. It's also called the compensating curvature. It is a combination of the curve of Spee and the curve of Wilson that are set into the anatomic occlusion for complete dentures. It is a term that is related only to complete denture occlusion. This is often a test question on the boards. In the pure neutrocentric monoplane concept, there is no vertical overlap of the anterior teeth. Please note this in your brain because a board question often relates to that statement. Our project will not be a pure neutrocentric concept. We will have a zero to one millimeter vertical overlap of the mandibular anterior teeth. Placement of that one millimeter vertical overlap makes for a more aesthetic setup. It eliminates the appearance of an anterior open bite, but this may lead to tipping of the dentures. A horizontal overlap will also be necessary along with your 20 degree condylar inclination for this setup to work in protrusive. True neutrocentric everything would be set at zero. Another aspect of the neutrocentric occlusion is that the patient is instructed not to incise the bolus of food. With this tooth arrangement, Devan has noted that the patient will become more of a chopper, not a chewer or a grinder. In the pure neutrocentric concept, the anterior-posterior plane of occlusion should be parallel to the denture foundation area and not dictated by a condylar inclination. The plane of occlusion is completely flat and level. There's no curve of Wilson or curve of Spee set up, which is called the compensating curve when you're talking about a complete denture setup. There's no vertical overlap of the anterior teeth. And then when using this concept of occlusion, the patient is instructed not to incise the bolus of food. With, with this arrangement, Devan noted that the patient becomes more of a chopper, not a chewer and a grinder of, of food. If you have not already done so, mark the maxillary cast with a circle around incisive papilla and the dot in the middle. The midline is marked by extending a line through the median palatal suture and extending it through the incisive papilla onto the land area of the cast. Make a horizontal mark on the land area 8 to 10 millimeters anterior or in front of the middle of the incisive papilla. On the mandible, place lines through the mean of the ridge and extend the line which should be centered over the retromolar pad and extend to the land area in the anterior. This is a set of casts of a real patient. We would do the same thing on these casts if we were setting teeth. We usually mark the midline on the occlusion rim and then transfer it to the cast. This method of going through the median palatal suture and the incisive papilla is a technique that the laboratory uses to mark a midline when the dentist does not supply it via a mark on the occlusion rim and on the cast. Here's an up close and personal look at the markings of your maxillary cast. Also notice the red line around the outer edge of the vestibule, right before the land area. The base plate and the wax must fill the depth and the width of the vestibule to this red line. It represents your border molding of the tissues during impression taking. Failure to fill this area with wax and base plate 
will yield a denture that does not have any retention. The lines on the land area of the mandibular cast represent the ends of the line over the crest of the ridge. These are used to guide you to tell you that your posterior teeth are being set over the crest of the ridge. The other black line should represent a line two-thirds of the way up the retromolar pad, which tells you how high your tooth may be set, or it helps determine that plane of occlusion. The articulator settings in pure monoplane neutral centric occlusion are all set at zero. With our deniform setup, we will place the condylar inclination at 20 degrees. The three landmarks used to determine the plane of occlusion are the midpoint or two thirds of the way up the retromolar pads bilaterally as previously marked on that mandibular cast, and the incisal edge of the maxillary central incisors. That determines your occlusal plane. You previously set your maxillary anterior teeth, and these little lines should show the orientation that you have on each tooth. Those teeth should have been set with the centrals and the canines on that flat plane. Well, that plane, flat plane should become contiguous with the occlusal plane in the posterior area that intersects two-thirds of the way up retromolar pad. When using pure neutrocentric concept of occlusion, the anterior teeth are set with no vertical overlap. One can produce a one millimeter vertical overlap for aesthetics. This will eliminate the look of the anterior open bite, but it requires that you change your articulator settings from all being zero. The condylar inclination would be set at 20 degrees to achieve this function. If we had an incisal guide table on our instrument, it would be set at five to 10 degrees. Just how much horizontal overlap is necessary on a uh, setup? In a class two patient, the mandible tends to travel farther anteriorly in function than on your typical class one patient. Consequently, more horizontal overlap is necessary to allow this functional movement without tooth interference. It's important that phonetics be checked carefully when the wax rims are established prior to sending out the case for tooth setting. In contrast, class three patients often demonstrate little or no anterior movement of the mandible during function. Consequently, little or no horizontal overlap is developed in the setup. Vertical overlap is more easily established if aesthetics are sought after. Some class threes are set end to end or lingual to the mandibular anteriors when anterior tooth relationship creates too large of a lever arm from the incisive papilla. The larger the lever arm, the more easily the posterior aspect of the denture is dislodged. Posterior palatal seal and extensions of the flanges to the depth of the vestibule are critical on this type of classification of patient. You should already have your lines on the mandibular cast as shown above. The black lines indicating the middle of the retromolar pad and a line extending down over the ridge, the mean of the ridge, extending onto the land area in the anterior, and additional marks marking halfway up the retromolar pad. In order to select teeth to be set in the case, you would want to make a mark on the mandible where the ridge rises dramatically to the retromolar pad. The mandibular occlusal table should end anterior to the point where the ascending ramus makes a steep turn upward. If you set teeth posterior to this point, they will be set on an incline. Pressure or occlusion on the inclined plane drives the denture forward and places undue pressure on areas causing discomfort or it dislodges the denture. The number and combination of denture teeth placed in your setup varies depending upon the arch length of the patient. 
In order to determine the tooth size to be selected, a measure may be taken from the distal of the maxillary canine to the point marked where the mandibular ridge turns upward. That number will give you a millimeter rate measure that will correspond closely to the last two digits of the denture tooth mold number. Some dentists set their maxillary anterior teeth chair side and then have the remaining teeth set by the laboratory. If teeth are not set, then an estimate of where the canines were removed from the arch is made and the same procedure is done to select the posterior teeth. Select posterior teeth length based on the distance from the mesial of the first premolar to the distal of the second molar. If a mold has three numbers, the first number relates to the cuspal inclination of the mold. For instance, anything beginning with a two is a 30 degree tooth. This slide shows what a tooth setup would look like in relation to the mark made on the mandible where the ridge turns slightly upward. The teeth are not set posterior to that mark. Also, the height on the occlusal plane corresponds to the mark halfway up the retromolar pad. Sometimes, as in this case, three teeth were chosen due to the space available anterior to the ascending ramus to the distal of the canine. A slightly larger mold was used, a 632, to increase the length of the occlusal plane given that we were only going to be setting three teeth. If a tooth is omitted, it is usually the first premolar. Another tooth setting consideration is this. The distal surface of the most posterior maxillary denture tooth should extend one to two millimeters distal to the most posterior mandibular denture tooth. This will prevent cheek or tongue biting. You must also consider the plastic clearance posterior to the tooth setup, which can cause the buccal fat pad to be pinched in it. You must look carefully in the mouth when a patient complains of something hurting in the posterior area, as it can be tooth-related or base-related. The upper picture on the right shows the opposite relationship where the mandibular teeth are set one to two millimeters distal to the upper. This will also hold the cheek out and prevent biting of the buccal mucosa. The picture on the lower right, though, is the perfect indication for cheek biting as they are end-to-end -end in relationship. Using the marks you made previously related to the mean average line you scribed down the mandibular ridge, cut a line on the wax occlusion rim to mimic the position of that line. Your canines should fall on this line if you turn the corners adequately on your anterior setup. Adjust the rims to a width that is centered over the crest of the ridge and has adequate wax in which to set premolars and molars. The middle groove of the molars and the premolars should fall on this line. Look down the rim from the posterior and see if your wax is centered over the ridge. Many of you um, have rims that are too far buckle in the premolar area. The mandibular teeth are set first as the mandibular denture is the hardest to stabilize and the teeth must be set over the ridge. The maxillary teeth are positioned in relation to the mandibular teeth to create a 1.5 millimeter horizontal overlap to the lowers to prevent cheek biting. The maxillary teeth have a few rules also which we will cover. If you were to position a couple of millimeter rulers and place them on each side of the retromolar pad and the bottom of the V is formed by your canines, the teeth should fall in that area between the rulers. Here's a view of both sides of the arch for evaluation of the position of the teeth. Those teeth should basically be positioned in that area designated by the two rulers. The teeth should be positioned with the middle groove of the teeth centered down that line drawn on the cast and on the wax rim. The line should be positioned between the tip of the properly positioned canines and the line drawn over the center of the retromolar pad. If the patient has a very large tongue and a very narrow arch form, you may place the teeth slightly buckled, but they should not be any farther buckle than the lingual cusp falling over that line down the center of the ridge. 
You must keep the occlusal plane level with the 3x3 three three blue plate, and it should intersect the retromolar pad half the two-thirds of the way up it. Here's an example of the teeth set on both sides. The teeth on the right may be encroaching upon the tongue space a little bit too much. You must consider when you move those teeth whether the tongue can get up under those lingual cusps and dislodge the denture in an upward direction as it goes into action. If the teeth are too lingual, this will happen. The mandibular arch sets the stage for the maxillary setup. If you get these level and in the correct position, then the upper teeth will be set to the lowers and you will be finished with this 3x3 three three blue plate. All the posteriors should touch this plate. Look at it from the lingual. Both the buckle and the lingual cusp tips should be in contact with the plate. You must have both cusps on the flat plane in the setup. If you are having difficulty doing just that because you try to move the tooth and you're meeting interference with the base plate, then you may cut a window, and if that doesn't work, you can also alter the tooth. Note the tooth image on the bottom of the slide on the right. This one has been adjusted so that it is able to be positioned more lingual without losing the aesthetics of the length of the tooth or jeopardizing the area where the acrylic bonds to the tooth called the ridge lap. You may alter the ridge lap of the tooth slightly in length, but you do not want to alter and make it appear that it's much shorter than the ones in front of it. This is extremely important in the canine in the first and second premolar areas. Make any corrections necessary. When you heat up all the teeth and try to smash them into occlusion, there's a tendency for all the teeth to move to the buckle, which then no longer places them on that line prepared down the center of the ridge. So be very careful of that when you make those changes. Note the premolar is of sufficient length to harmonize with the cuspid in the lower left picture. The premolar should have the gingival height at about the same level or very close to that of the canine. Note the effect on aesthetics when the length of the premolar does not harmonize with the canine as shown in the picture on the bottom right. This is possibly the result of alteration of the tooth by the laboratory when the teeth were being set in order to make it fit into the area without altering the base plate. The lower picture is a testament as to how unesthetic this result can be. Once the lower is established, you're ready to set the maxillary teeth, hooray. Your goal is to set those teeth flat with a 1.5 millimeter horizontal overlap with the lower teeth. You would like to have the dentures flange to flange have the shape shown by the yellow curve on the picture on the left. If the muscles flex, they will help seat the denture. You do not want the maxillary occlusal edges on the teeth to be out buckly past the depth of the vestibule, which is shown with that red arrow. The teeth on this are not past that depth. If they were, though, the muscles would in, uh, unseat the dentures. If they are out too far buckly to get a 1.5 millimeter horizontal overlap, then they should be placed into crossbite with the lower arch. You would create a 1.5 millimeter horizontal overlap, but it would be like the reverse of a customary setup. Check the horizontal overlap of the posterior teeth. It should be sufficient to prevent biting of the cheek and the corner of the mouth. I like to see about a 1.5 millimeters of overlap. If you have two millimeters or greater, then you are really lowering the occlusal biting surface of the teeth. The flatness of the maxillary premolars is provided by the flat buccal and lingual cusp. Note that in this setup, both the lingual and the buccal cusp of the posterior teeth contact the occlusal plane. Just a reminder that we have set a pure neutrocentric occlusal scheme. All the articulator settings are at zero. You have no vertical overlap of the maxillary anteriors. All the maxillary teeth are on a flat plane with no curve of Spee or curve of Wilson. 
The anterior posterior plane of occlusion is parallel with the denture foundation. And when using this concept of occlusion, the patient's instructed not to incise a bolus of food. After the teeth are set to satisfaction, reestablish centric contacts as necessary by manipulating the mandibular posterior teeth. Make sure that the incisal guide pin maintains contact with the incisal guide table when you have completed this step. While performing this step, make sure that you do not alter the horizontal overlap of the posterior teeth. In the final setup, the maxillary teeth should conform to the alveolar ridge with the lingual cusp roughly over a line from the tip of the canine to the hamular notch. On this illustration, the teeth to the left are in the correct position and the ones on uh, your right are too far to the buckle. The teeth must be in those positions while maintaining a one to two millimeter horizontal overlap with the lower posteriors. The teeth must be kept within the depth of the buccal vestibule or crossbite must be considered as an option. The patient's teeth on the patient's left are possibly beyond that point and crossbite is the option of choice. If the teeth are set buckly past the depth of the vestibule or the center of the flange, then you should put your teeth in crossbite. The musculature will dislodge the denture if you take those maxillary cusps out past the depth of the vestibule. When the patient opens wide, the musculature will catch the denture and actually dislodge it. This is a beautiful setup where the occlusion was changed on the left side to go into crossbite. If you go into crossbite, you do not have to take all the posterior teeth into crossbite, but you must make the cross between normal occlusion and crossbite at an embrasure or at a groove between the cusp of the teeth. This will prevent cheek biting. There is nothing wrong with crossbite. This type of occlusion may allow the patient to have much better masticatory function and the muscles will not dislodge the denture upon opening wide. You do not have to have the same occlusion on both sides of the arch. In this particular example, it shows normal occlusion on the patient's right and crossbite on the patient's left. It does not have to be the same on both sides. This slide shows something called Christensen's phenomenon. Picture this. The patient is coming forward to incise food. The condylar inclination is set at 20 degrees. The posterior teeth will be separated as shown on the picture on the upper part. If the condyle is set at 30 degrees, the patient will come forward to incise food and the space between the posterior teeth will be as shown on the lower picture. The concept is known as Christensen's phenomenon. It can be stated that the larger the condylar inclination setting, the greater separation of the posterior teeth when the patient goes into protrusive. Keeping Christensen's phenomenon in mind, there is a second option for non-anatomic occlusion, and it is a setup referred to as balanced non-anatomic occlusion using a balancing ramp. We said that the steeper the condylar inclination, the greater the posterior discrepancy in protrusive and lateral excursions, and the greater the need for balancing ramps. These ramps will offset tipping of the complete dentures. A ramp is pictured on the slide that keeps the teeth in contact in the anterior and the posterior when incising food thus disallowing tipping of the complete denture. Lateral or tipping forces tend to have an unfavorable effect on denture stability, and the structures comprising the denture foundation area get irritated when this occurs. As such, denture occlusion differs from organic occlusion in that in dentures we need bilateral balance versus anterior guidance. In order to compensate for the lack of retention, stability, and support when compared with natural dentition. 
bilateral balance decreases the transmission of lateral tipping forces. Monoplane occlusion attempts to further decrease tipping forces by minimizing the effect of inclined plane contact between the maxillary and mandibular denture. Bilateral balanced occlusion when using zero degree cusp teeth is obtained by using balancing racks, ramps in the posterior. You have a couple of sources of inclined plane contact that can cause problems. One is the cuspal incline itself on the maxillary or mandibular denture tooth opposing the like on the opposite arch. The vertical overlap that you sometimes create in the maxillary and mandibular anterior teeth can also provide that inclined plane contact that can be a problem. When any type of anatomical occlusion or balanced occlusion using a balancing ramp is done, a protrusive record should be recorded to set the condylar inclination. This will enable adjustment of the wax before processing a ramp on the denture. It would be even more accurate if we could do lateral records, but the setting of 15 is an average setting and will be used for our articulators. The protrusive record is used to adjust the condylar guidance, and this should be done after that record is recorded. After adjusting your condylar guidance, Add the balancing ramp as shown above in wax. In all lateral excursions and in protrusive, you should observe at least three points of contact bilaterally and in the anterior, the incisors should also be touching. If this is not properly adjusted, you can get quite a bit of soreness in that posterior area of the arch. Look closely at the pictures and observe how the contact is present in working and in balancing. This slide shows the working and balancing that you would get with the balancing ramps added. For non-anatomic with a balancing ramp, you can change the occlusal plane to incorporate a little bit of curve of Wilson in it to get more balanced retent uh, occlusion. The non-anatomic monoplane neutrocentric will be strictly in occlusion when that patient is on the balancing ramp and there will be three-point contact on each side of the arch as well as in the anterior. When the patient has complete bilateral balance using anatomic teeth, then those teeth must maintain contact in all movements. When the patient goes into working, on the left side and the right side, you are going to maintain contact with the cusp in all directions. Here is another illustration of bilateral balance using steep cusp anatomic teeth. The teeth maintain contact on both sides of the arch in all the movements. This represents the term bilateral balanced occlusion. This is a difficult setup to do um, and laboratory people would probably be able to do this a little better than we could as learning students. This is just a picture of what a completed setup might look like with non-anatomic occlusion and without the balancing rounds. This is basically what our project will be. Sometimes you have a problem of inadequate room between the arches to set teeth without cutting a window in the base plate. A patient with very large ridges often demonstrates this problem. If you have the problem, just go ahead and cut your window all at once. Leave enough of your base plate around the borders to protect the base plate from breakage. If after cutting the window you still have problems arranging the posterior teeth, then adjust your tooth as shown around slide 36. If you have a problem getting the teeth to set flat in your arrangement, you may have to adjust the base plate on the buckle or adjust the teeth on the ridge lap area. Here are some additional references on complete denture occlusion.